Good morning, everyone. Wherever you are, whether you're watching live or on catch up, please always remember the sanctuary motto, wherever you are, we are here for you. Welcome to today's Healing Minute from the virtual Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary. It's Friday the 5th of March 2021, St Piran's Day. St Piran is the patron saint of Cornwall, a county I love. I'm John, speaking to you today from Hillingdon, West London. And I need to warn you that if you hear a loud rumbling noise, please ignore it, as we're on the flight path of North Holt Airport, and it'll be somebody posh or important coming over. The music you're listening to today is by Aeolia and the CD is entitled Angel Love and the track Celestial Sanctity. Thank you for joining us for the Healing Minute today. Today's session as always includes an opportunity for each of us to send healing to the people and animals we know are in need and of course as Jennifer from the Healing Trust always reminds us that we need to heal the healer first before the healer can heal other people. My little reading today after the Healing Minute is about The Healing Intelligence, a book written by Harry, which you can see my co the copy of my front cover in the photo, and the finishing music from an interesting gentleman, um, which I hope the title will uplift everybody. But I'm going to turn the music down now as we prepare by relaxing, ready for the healing minute. In preparation for the healing minute, please close your eyes if it's safe to do so and in your mind take yourself off to your own personal sanctuary, somewhere that you feel perfectly safe, totally at ease and completely peaceful. Take a deep breath in and inhale the healing energy and allow it to flow through your body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. As you breathe out, let go of all your personal stresses and any dis-ease in your daily life. As we begin to attune, for that is one of the simple, effective and origins of linking to healing. We give thanks that we are gathered here today. We ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to the flow of love and healing to come through us. As our crown chakra opens, we visualise a column of pure white light filling our body. Then feel the balance and harmony within our body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of our feet and our base chakra. We feel our connection to the universal source of pure unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing, protective love of Mother Earth. Today I'd like to read the sanctuary prayer. Heavenly Father, I surrender myself to the good influencing of your healing ministers in spirit, that through your divine healing power the disharmonies within me might be overcome and the stresses of mind and body be eased and lessened day by day. Help me to adopt a more positive and helpful way of thought. Bring me into closer harmony with those around me and the divine healing purpose. And for those who are sick or in the darkness of despair, who do not know of the help that can reach them from spirit, I pray that awareness will come to them soon, that they too 
might experience the upliftment of spirit that can lead us all through harmony towards true health. May God bless you. Amen. The Great Invocation This is our invitation to spirit and like-minded soul to link together in the healing purpose of this time. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human mind. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human heart. May the coming one return to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the centre, which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. We ask now that all people and animals whose names we hold in the distant healing folder may receive healing for their highest good. We also request healing for their family, friends and the people who have requested distant healing. May they be placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for their highest good. Let us take that minute of silence to send out the loving thoughts. Thank you. Our thanks and blessings for your help here today and of course to our friends in spirit. This week I learnt that we can add a donate button to this broadcast. Harry always said healing was the gift of God but he lived and survived on donations so I put the button on there in case anybody, only if you can afford it of course, would like to add to the sanctuary's coffers. So today's reading, The Healing Intelligence. I have a very brief introduction to Harry Ebert's book, The Healing Intelligence. The cover of which I possess uh, is what you've seen earlier. So please forgive me if my interpretation of the very long, technical and complicated book uh, is wrong. Harry Edwards was an analytically minded man with a sceptical view on life, plus a scientific approach to research. He was relentless in his enthusiasm, always seeking evidence that spiritual healing was effective. This book was written in 1965 and seeks to explain in medical terminology how he perceived that healing works. Obviously since then medical technology and science has advanced beyond the dreams that people had then. So some of these ideas may seem a little old-fashioned. However, I do believe that they would stand up to scrutiny. Let's consider what Harry calls bodily intelligence. 
the normal method a human, or indeed an animal, uses to heal itself naturally. When the skin, for example, is cut through accident, the brain is triggered by nerve endings, that the skin has been penetrated and puts in motion a process. This is automatic. Pain results in the brain and sets in motion a raising of blood pressure to deliver resources to the site of the injury. Leukocytes heal the aperture and various cells then set about rebuilding the layers of skin, which over time reconstruct the barrier between the sensitive parts and the outside world. We don't, do not need to think about the individual steps of the process, which Harry details precisely in his book. Our bodily intelligence just swings into automatic action. It assumes the patient, of course, is not a haemophiliac. Well, what if the body has forgotten or even becomes programmed to malfunction? Sometimes, in the case of, say, cancer, the body just starts growing these tumours and no automatic healing reaction is triggered by these abnormal growths. Today we know that all these human conditions are determined by DNA. In fact, it's recently been determined that by use of a process known as CRISPR, DNA can in fact be changed to eradicate certain diseases such as sickle cell anemia. Harry believed the act of healing was started when an attuned healer requested, either absently or hands-on, to help their, through their guides via the spirit doctors to intercede on the patient's behalf. He always maintained that healing was an expression of God's love for human and animal kind and maintained a team of doctors who had elevated to the spiritual realms still pursuing their vocation that they had on the earth plane, but in spirit. He believed that the healer's request was transmitted with a diagnosis determined by the guides to this medical squad, who would in turn intercede with the healing intelligence of the patient. They would send healing energies to the patients via the pineal gland, which sits behind the third eye chakra. Spirit doctors would trigger a patient's healing intelligence, which would in turn activate the bodily intelligence to take the corrective actions. In the case of arthritis or arthritic cells, would be encouraged to dissolve around the, the buildup of excess material around a joint. For cancer, white blood cells notified that these growths were foe, not friend, and had them destroyed. In modern parlance, perhaps the healing intelligence simply modifies the DNA to bring about the corrective response. This is my ham-fisted explanation, but Harry's words are so much more precise and scientific. Let's read a little bit, an extract from the book. I promise it won't be too long. Spontaneous healings are a common experience with healers. There are far too many to be discounted as coincidental. There must be a law governed process responsible for them. It is evading the issue to accept the medical formulae, which is that in some strange and inexplicable way, nature has asserted itself. My reply to this is that the motive power behind all spontaneous healings is that of spirit healing in a planned and orderly manner. This leads us to admit the existence of yet another form of healing intelligence, that of spirit. The healing of the man's throat cancer is but one instance of this. How this intelligence acts and the means it can employ and how we can enlist its aid to cooperate with it is now the subject for consideration. Unfortunately, there exists, with a considerable number of sick people, a state of healing inertia. The mind and body of the patient has, become, has come to accept the ill condition. It's habitual. The nature of the sickness has been of long duration, 
and one for which the doctors have said nothing further can be done and the patient must learn to live with the trouble. Thus the disease becomes an accepted state by the body and the mind. No effort is made to ameliorate or overcome it. Under these circumstances, is it illogical to assume that the bodily intelligence and the natural healing incentives become apathetic and dormant? If we can arouse the mind and healing intelligence to become active, then it may well be that relief can be given and a recovery follow, or at least any further progress of the complaint can be arrested. Is our healing experience in our healing experience? It is a common thing for a patient to seek healing when they have endured an incurable condition for a long time. In asking for this, they have taken the first step towards getting better with the anticipation the healing will be able to help them. There is no doubt in my mind that for those who are truly attuned and blessed with spirit doctors as their guides, this wonderful flow of healing power is possible. If you want to read the full account and many other stories about our founder, the full book is available from the gift shop at a reasonable price. For this truly is an insight into the analytical mind of Harry. Next time, when I return, it will be Good Friday on the 2nd of April. It'll be an Easter-focused little reading. Not quite sure what it is, I'll wait for spirit to inspire me. But in the intervening month, I'm off to get a new right hip joint. Enough of me for now. Parish notices. Here we come. Thursday, there is a guided meditation on Zoom and Facebook at 2pm. Tomorrow's Healing Minute is by our lovely friend Alan. There is, on Zoom, an animal healing and communication workshop with Elizabeth Whiter on Saturday the 13th of March. I'm afraid this one is not free. This it has a cost of £45 per ticket and details are available on the website. Plus, on Sunday the 14th of March, which of course in the UK is Mother's Day, Alan will lead a group healing session at 10.30am after the healing minute on Zoom only. And again, you can book this via Eventbrite, but this I think is free. All of the links we have are on our website. So I'm going to say farewell. And thank you for spending your valuable time with us for the benefit of others who are in need. Anyone who has had healing at the sanctuary um, is on the distant healing list. But of course, we're closed at the moment due to COVID lockdown. Lord knows when we'll reopen, but there will be messages on our website. So on to the music. Well, the music today is by a gentleman an African-American gentleman by the name of Lenny Kravitz. It's entitled Raise Vibration, and I'm sure he will raise our, all our vibrations. He's an interesting character because his mother was an African-American of Bahamian descent, but his father was a Russian Jewish, and that has given him a very wide perspective on life. He is also a devoted Christian, and on his back, he carries a tattoo that states, My heart belongs to Jesus. Just how my God is starting and without us.
Well, farewell, happy group. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep the love flowing. Bye-bye. <laughs>